it's lovely to be back again on Around the Wickets on the Paparay.com. As you know, Sri Lanka's tour of New Zealand is over. It's done and dusted. And now, we're all excited, looking forward to a two-test series against Australia. Very briefly, that last game in New Zealand, I personally thought, I'm sure you thought as well, that Sri Lanka had an excellent chance of beating New Zealand during that T20 game, but not to be. 179 for 7, Sri Lanka 144 all out, lost by 35 runs. Now, I know we focused our attention on uh, Sri Lanka's performance in New Zealand in the last program. We are going to focus our attention here today and also we, we want to look ahead uh, to the two test matches between Sri Lanka and Australia. Once again, Fabi Smaruf with me. Thank you for joining us. And as I said at the introduction, uh, Maha, I felt honestly that uh, Sri Lanka were in with a very good chance of winning this last T20 game considering how the game actually kept fluctuating. New Zealand were in trouble, then Sri Lanka were looking good and then suddenly the pendulum just settled on the New Zealand side. I thought uh, taking power play, we picked up about three wickets uh, in the power play and we were, we were in the game as you correctly said. Then uh, it was all the all-rounder show, the Doug, Doug Bracewell and the debutant scored the runs and 179 was a, was a pass score in that, in that wicket, in that stadium, smaller boundaries. We were always in the game because the 200s have been scored at uh, Eden Park in Auckland, but uh, the way we batted, what disappointed me, whoever got start mm. never went and uh, made a big one. If you take uh, Dinoshan Dikwell from Kusal Janit, Tisara Perra, all got a start, but never, no one put their hand up and took that responsibility to finish that off. So th that was the biggest disappointment. And after the game, even Lasit Malinga, the captain, mm. said that you know, it's disappointing to see how the batsmen got out. There was no one taking the responsibility. So that's a big concern mm. going towards. Uh, the ODI leg, which is going to come up against South Africa next. But, you know, I will definitely agree with you uh, when it comes to the entire tour of New Zealand. You know, we had, we, we had our moments. Yeah. We had our moments, but, you know, the death bowling, every game uh, more than 10 runs in the last 10 overs, so that's a big disappointment. And batting-wise, except Tisara Perra and maybe one or two, mm. I thought the rest of it uh, was just uh, you know, not up to the mark. So, big responsibility going towards Australian tour is a different challenge. And all looking forward to uh, the South African uh, one-day leg, which is which is the only only five one days we got before the World Cup. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, before I talk about Australia, I just want to briefly touch on two points that he made. He spoke about death bowling. He spoke about the batting. Now, my question to you is, death bowling becomes a problem when you don't have wickets between the 20th and the 40th over. Yes. Because you're looking to bowl at two batsmen who are set. Now, we will crucify the death bowlers and say, you're giving 100 runs, you're giving 80, 90 runs, but whom are they bowling to? Now, that's question number one. I think that's an area yeah. that the Sri Lankans will have to address. The second area that I'm a little bit concerned, yes, Tisara has been used as a floater. He's been battered up and down the order. But what about Gunaratna's and Dasun Shanaka's place? I get the feeling that they were brilliant on pitches that are, you know, batsman friendly subcontinent in Sri Lanka. But give them a little bit of juice on a pitch to bat on. I'm not so sure whether there'll be the answers. Now, these are my thoughts. Put on your selector's cap, your, your, your analyst cap and, and very briefly tell me. I, I can't dwell too much, but very briefly. I thought the uh, first question, the spinner, I think Sandra can, I mean, I kept saying that he, he's, uh, he can't, I mean, if, if you have no option, he'll be our number one mm -hmm. spinner. But going forward, I think if we get Akira Dhananjay cleared, who's going for yeah. the test very soon, I think straight away we'll walk into the team and he will, he will play in, my, in all formats. Mm -hmm. Because he's a wicket-taking bowler. Mm -hmm. We need a spinner who's going to control things in the middle. That's exactly what we didn't have. Mm -hmm. Three games, just one wicket off, uh, from Sandakan, yeah. which is not good enough. And that's exactly why we, every game we consider more than... 100 runs because Ross Taylor mainly was batting through the middle, milking the singles. Come the 40th over, he frees his arms and he gets going. So that was the uh, issue what we had in the middle overs. Second question about the batting. I think batting at number six, that's a very crucial uh, crucial position. Now, I, I know when Angie gets fit for the South African series, he'll, he'll bat at five. He'll straight away walk into the team. Mm -hmm. But number six, for me, Asela Guratna. You know, it's unfair on him just giving a couple of games and getting him out because he's coming back into the international scene after a while. We know his potential, but he has to work hard to get that place back. With Dasun Sanaka, for me, you know, he's someone, if he gets going, you know, he'll score runs. But if you take his history, against Lexman, he's been struggling lots of times. I remember against Chahal, I remember against, uh, in the series against Saudi. 
So that's something that he has to work out. But for me, he has to bat at number seven or eight. But number seven, I think Tisera Pereira is stable. I think he should continue at seven. And in case if you are playing two seamers, uh, two fast bowlers, and two all-rounder seamers, I think Dasun Sanak will walk in at number eight for me. But at number six, I still believe Asela can do a job, okay. considering the fact that you know he can finish off innings and he's a he can hit the big shots that we need. And uh, even Dhanan Silla can come at uh, number six uh, for the con consideration. But for me, the top five is quite stable. Injury free, everyone stays safe. But uh, six and eight is where the little concern for me uh, at the moment. Well, we're going to forget about those concerns for a moment because we're not going to play one day cricket in Australia. We're going to play test cricket. So we're going to play two test matches. Dinesh Chandimal had said the batsmen need to score 300 plus runs in the first innings. Now, two test matches coming up. The first game at Brisbane. That's going to be a day night fixture starting on the 24th to the 28th. And then we go to Canberra from the 1st of February. To the 15th, the 5th of February. Now, few questions asked about the Sri Lankan playing level. Now, one of the biggest or, or two of the biggest questions or two of the uh, burning questions that everyone's asking is, which I will ask you, who will open with Karuna Ratna and who will take the most experienced and possibly Sri Lanka's best batsman's place, Angelo Matthews' place? What are your thoughts? I'm sorry, we're looking at the <coughs> squad, Daroshan. There are yeah. nine batsmen in the squad. So, for the opener slot, straight away, I can only think of Lairu Tiriman. With his experience, we need to give him a go. There are five test matches coming up. And if I'm a selector, I'll give him the confidence. Or if I'm the captain, I'll give him the confidence. You're playing the five test match, make use of it. Okay. He's experienced enough to do it. Right. So, I think straight away for me, I'll push him at, uh, at, the, push him at the opening slot. And uh, number three would be Dinesh Chandimal. Yeah. Four should be uh, Kusal Mendis. Yeah. And number seven, I'll just keep five and six for the moment. Okay. Seven would be Dick Weller. Right. Number five and six, there are three, slo the three slots. Dananja is there. Dananja, Roshan. I mean, Sadira, I will, too young, I'll only consider him as an open for the moment. Kusal Perera. Kusal Perera, Dananja de Silva, and Roshan Silva. Those three will fit into my five, uh, five and six because we have to play seven Two batters. Of Two of them has to fit in at so five and six. Two. You know, taking the consideration, last test Roshan played in Christchurch. And I think Dhananja Silva will get a go. So he'll bat it probably bat at five. This is my, just my opinion. Number six, I'll still uh, have Kusal Janit going at number six. I mean, I mean it's, it's a tough, cho tough choice, but knowing Kusal Janit Perra at number six, and he's good against pace, and we got three quick bowlers who are bowling at 140. And with the bounce, and Kusal Janit loves that pace and bounce. So this is my personal opinion. I would like to see him at six. I mean, Roshan Silva can fit in at five. So it's a tussle between Roshan and Dhananja. I'll take Dhananja's, I'll give Dhananja a go. But Roshan is not that far, I mean, just that under the con uh, conditions. I just feel like uh, those are my top seven. Right, good point. What about the fast bowlers? Lairu Kumara, Kasun Rajita, and Surang Lakmal. No, I think uh, Lairu Kumar will definitely play. Surang will definitely play. I think Kasun Rajita will get one more go. Or maybe Nuan Pradeep may be in a consideration if, he's keep, if, he, if he keeps fit. And one spinner would be uh, Dilwan Perra at number eight. Now, interesting, interesting. Uh, Australia seem to be overhauling their team, yeah. overhauling their team in a big way. They've dropped Finch, Aaron Finch gone, Sean Marsh is gone. Now, interestingly, uh, Justin Langer has said Sean Marsh is very much part of the World Cup uh, plans, but not uh, in the test uh, games for against Sri Lanka. Joe Burns, uh, sorry, Mitch Marsh gone, Peter Hanscom gone, Matt Renshaw gone, Joe Burns. What am I saying? Matt, Matt, sorry, Matt Renshaw is back. My apologies. <laughs> I'm just reading something. I have I just missed a punctuation mark and see what it could do. <laughs> Peter Hanscom, they, they've been dropped. So Matt Renshaw is back. Joe Burns is back. And now the other guy, the 20-year-old, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. <laughs> you tell me. He sounds Polish. What's his name? How do you, I, I, I'll do the easy part. Will. What's the, what's the second name? Just quit called me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try and pronounce it the way it's written. It's, it, it, it sounds bad. I don't want to pronounce it. So, I'll, I'll just leave it like Will. Matt Range or Joe Burns and Will. They're all in the 13-man squad. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is, it's an overhaul for Australia. So, don't you see that this is a, despite Sri Lanka struggling at the international level, they also have a good chance of, uh, you know, uh, giving Australia a good run. I think, I mean, that's what Jinesh Sandimal said. If they score three, if 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 if, our, if the Sri Lankans score 300 against the experienced bowling attack of Ken Cummins and Josh Hazelwood, uh, Mitchell Stark and Nathan Lyon, 
we'll have a chance because there are so many guys coming back into the team yeah. and they are under pressure and I'm pretty sure they are going to be live grass, the ball will be moving, oh, yeah. moving and it's a day-night game, it's going to be swinging as well. So that's what Dinesh said, you know, I feel like 300 if he score, you know, we are in for a chance because there are so many batsmen making comeback, we could put the pressure and get the better of them. Yeah, now, uh, let's try and now focus a little bit uh, closer home or, or at home, Ireland A versus Sri Lanka. And uh, Sri Lanka won the series, one game to nil. Of course, uh, we did discuss the island tour last time. They're quite inexperienced and young and the Sri Lankans have been kind of, you know, moving their uh, players around. So, lots of players have been given opportunities. But two players who seriously stood out in the last game, besides Angelo Pereira, who was consistent, are Patum Nisanka and Chamika Karunaratna. Now, all three of them, that is Angelo Pereira, Patum Nisanka and Chamika Karunaratna, are all three quite closely associated with you, NCC boys. Uh, we know about Angelo Perra. I mean, he's a good player. We've seen him. He's played at the highest level, so we're not going to dwell too much about him. But Patum Nisanka, to me, seemed to be someone who's surprising a few people with the way he's scoring runs. How good is he? I mean, he's a good player. He's a youngster. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, he's ready, but not ready to, to, the, world, to the test side yet. You know, one good season at NCC because this is his first year. He's been scoring a lot of runs at NCC. I mean, three games, so 500 He's runs double and double hundred and the 18 level. So he has scored a lot of runs. Yeah. He definitely is in the consideration, but it's it's too early for me personally because I know the boy for the last four years. I've been tracking him. I've been wanting him to come to NCC for a long time. So I feel like you know, good one year at NCC, mm. and then I'm pretty sure that by next year mm. or end of this year, mm. he'll be ready uh, up for uh, ready for Test cricket. As you said, Angelo Perra been very consistent mm -hmm. there and there about in selections radar. Chami Karanath, very excited good, with Chami Karanath. Yeah, good, good fast bowler, 135 plus and a hard hitter. But in this innings, he got 100 mm -hmm. trying to save the game. Exactly. So he showed the other side of him as yeah. well. So he's in the, he, I'm definitely in the consideration after the performance mm -hmm. such as this. And also Sham Washan and uh, yeah, Kamidu Mendis. They're good, Kamidu, but Kamidu Mendis, that name. That name, I think, is going to make waves in Sri Lanka. And I, I honestly feel that's a player that the Sri Lankans should take a closer look when it comes to the one-day game. But let's leave him for the moment as… I think Domes, I mean, in, in subcontinent, he'll yeah. be much more effective playing as a second spinner. He could bowl with both arms and he's going to be very good at number seven, probably eight. No, I've seen him play against England. I was very impressed with the maturity he showed. As, as, and then in that emerging game, you know, he, he played and, and, and the way he batted against India, he, he has in him the credentials to be a player who could who, who could go on. And Shamwashan, of course, we've heard that name, so let's give them some time. Yeah, when it comes to coming to Mendes, uh, Roshan, I would feel South Africa, the squad 15 or 16, whatever is going to be named for the one days, will be the World Cup 15. Yeah. So I think straight away getting uh, coming to Mendes in, I don't think no. it's going to happen. Yeah. But soon after the World Cup, I'm pretty sure, I mean, however, which way, whichever way the, uh, our performance goes, I think we should set away, get, come in the medicine, give him the experience, give him all the ATM tours which is available and uh, slowly but surely get him in the squad because as you said, I'm with, I'm with you, when it comes to his performance, he's much more mature than his age. Mm. The way he battled so many uh, in, the, in the Asia Cup when we won the Emerging Trophy, yeah. when he won us the game and even this uh, couple of test matches, well, the way he has played. So I think we have a good youngster in hand, but it's important in two youngsters, in Patumni Sankar. Nurture them in a proper way. You're yeah, right, talking about maturity and youngsters, I think the Sri Lankan under 19 should be hailed for beating their Australian counterparts in the only test match, the, the three day test match. Sri Lanka won. It was a very convincing win. Australia made 269 for 9 declared and then were dismissed for 151 and Sri Lanka 19, 309. There was a struggle, but they got 214 for 7 of 19 overs and 4 ball. Overall, Excellent performance by the Sri Lankan under-19. But what is important, as far as I'm concerned, Maha, this is good. But what about the progress? What about the next level? I think that's where some of these youngsters have fallen by the wayside. Absolutely. I think uh, I mean, getting up to the benchmark is easier. Maintain is going to be tough. So, I think we are under-19 boys got what it takes to stay there. But it all depends on how hard, how hard you work on. Beating Australia on 19 in a three-day game, I think it, has, it, has, it hasn't happened for a, wherever it has happened, I'm not sure. I think probably not. And this is something historical because you should applaud them, how they started, uh, especially after losing the one-day series and how they finish off is just magnificent. Yeah, brilliant effort, no doubt. Congratulations to the Sri Lanka Under-19 team. Congratulations to the A team. Well, now it's up to the Sri Lankan national team. They got a great chance of beating Australia in Australia. That's something that 
doesn't happen all the time. And in fact, India was the first team from the subcontinent ever to win a series in Australia. So if Sri Lanka can draw the series, I think it will be an outstanding performance. Well, we're going to keep a close eye on the two test matches that are happening in Brisbane and Canberra. We're almost at the end of our program around the weekers on the pathway.com. Well, I need to ask you our weekly question. Now, the question is, we were talking about the under-19 team, the historic victory, as he said, beating the Australian under-19 in a test match. So, we thought we'll ask you a question based on the under-19. Now, the question is, who led Sri Lanka's under-19 when they beat Australia under-19 for the first time in 1985? In fact, they have been beaten. So, it's after all not historical. We have done that before, but still it's a great achievement. So, our question is, do your research, who was the Sri Lanka captain when Sri Lanka beat Australia in an under-19 game in 1985. I kind of have a feeling, but I won't mention it. I'll, I'll, I'll let just you. one year old. <laughs> I, uh, well, can't be him then, because he was just born. He just says he was just one year old. But I have a feeling, I'm not going to mention the name. I'll let you tell us who that captain was. Incidentally, we asked you a question last week. Who was the first Sri Lankan to take 10 wickets in a first-class innings? Now, the winner was Mohammad Azadi. Mohammad Assad, I, I see a punctuation mark and I thought it, it was an I. I. I seem to be reading a lot of things wrong today. Mohammad Assad, congratulations, the winner. And the right answer was Pramodya Vikramasinghe. He took 10 for 41 against Kaluthara Physical Culture Club, playing for the SSC in the 1991-92 season. So that's it on Around the Wickers on the Papare.com. We will come back again very soon with another edition. Until we see you again. Goodbye from all of us.